deserve. Darn straight. And never mind what Brock had to trade the landlord to get that intra Silsi for us. The landlord? He's not the landlord! <laughs> uh, okay. He really did it. Tyr really slept in my broom closet. Is that normal for you tall, godly sorts? Or just the ones locked up for a lifetime or two? And Atreus? Fashionable. Kratos? Right behind you. I'll meet you at the gateway presently, friends. Mind if I take a little peek at you? I promise I'll be brief. <clears throat> My goodness, what a strapping physique. Capable of an astounding variety of acts of violence, I imagine. What is happening? Uh, this must be the squirrel that tends the world tree. That delectable aroma. Could it be? Pardon the intrusion. Ah, yes. Amber resin. Delightfully nutty with a hint of squid ink. No. 
Not one for gastronomic exploration, I see. Wait, if you're right at Hosker, why are you so different when we summon you for help? It's a long story. <laughs> but you are correct. I am indeed Ratatosker. The one you know as Ratatosker is merely one of my spectral aspects. And a particularly nasty one at that. I consider him so far removed from myself that he's practically a different person. Speaking of... Bitter, would you like to come out and see your friends? Fuck off! I'm busy! I suppose that was to be expected. Anyway, mm, now that I've polished off all this resin for you, would you like the seed back? It is the seed. Indeed. A seed of Yggdrasil, to be precise. Mm. Since my dwarven tenants performed their little reconfiguration, you'll need seeds like these to open up new destinations on my tree. <laughs> Your tree, huh? Yes, my tree. Here, let me show you. <sighs> ah, so that's why good Master Brock needed an Alpine seed. Clearly, you have important matters afoot. That seed you found unlocks Niflheim, of all places, a realm as ancient as it is vaguely sticky. Svartalfheim remains at your disposal if you have unresolved business amongst the dwarves. not going to Alphon yet. It's probably best for Tyr to wait for us here. The soldiers we fought in Svartalfheim, those were Einherjar? I thought Einherjar were just spirits in Valhalla until Ragnarok comes. They were no spirits. Indeed, brother. Odin appears to have found a loophole. Activated his forces early as a standing army. Perhaps something he could only do without any honest Valkyries around to stand in his way. Ravens? The ones we've been destroying all this time? So it would seem.
do you think that means? I don't know. But there's definitely something more going on here. can't read them. They seem to like us, though. One hopes. I suppose we should continue to destroy any of Odin's ravens when we find them. something over here. Ah, a memory of war. You could use this as a training arena if you like. You'll just be fighting the recollections of enemies. They won't be able to harm you. Ah! 
have to be here? Creeping me out, all these poor bastards with their souls cut up. I know this sounds weird, but can you tell me again what happens when someone dies? Every living thing has a soul, and every soul has four parts. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Direction steers the souls of giants, dwarves, elves, and animals toward the Lake of Souls in Alfheim, where all the parts may be absorbed back into Alfheim's great light. So that's where Fenrir is? The Lake of Souls? So long as his soul still has its direction, aye, it's well on its way. Ah, there you are. I knew you hadn't forgotten me. Dear, do you know Ratatosker? Of course. Master Kratos, I We were just catching up in your absence. Of the squirrels I've conversed with, he's easily the most dapper. Speak. If you are ever in need of my services and I am not present, I have installed these handy chimes for you to notify me. Simply throw your axe and strike the chimes and I will attend to your needs. Would you care to take a practice throw? A magnificent throw, Master Kratos. Truly a seasoned pro. Very well. You know how to reach me now. All that said, I'm happy to discuss anything else on your mind. I have a question. Splendid! I delight in offering my tutelage to the Inquisitive. Over the ledge, by the gateway over there. I noticed these dragons. Dragons? Oh no, young Master Atreus. Those are leaned worms, the brood of Neithog. Neithog? That's the mother? Correct. She's also a vital piece of the Yggdrasilian circle of life, as it were. I tend the branches up here, while Neatho chews the roots from below to prevent overgrowth. A delicate balance. So they're friendly? Well, they're not nearly so affable as myself, but there's no reason to expect hostility so long as they're left in peace. Neatho is a stern matriarch, as protective of her offspring as she is determined to teach them proper discipline. That sounds... Familiar. Hmm. Well, good luck out there. I am already here, Master Kratos. Perhaps there was some confusion. This is for calling me out here, not for when I am here. Do you just like hearing the sound of the chimes? I suppose they do sound very pretty. <laughs> Master Kratos, this feels very uncharacteristic of you, but if you enjoy the pretty chimes that much, I will allow you to indulge. Yes, you've done it. Well thrown. Ah, the sound of the chimes is not unpainful at this distance, so perhaps you could not? Already here, as it were. So, I'm ready to go to Alfheim when you are, Father. Unless you wanted to finish something in Svartalfheim first.
Mimir, you were talking about how Fenrir's soul is headed for the light of Alphon. But that's because he was a wolf, right? Aye. Were he a god or a human who died in battle, a Valkyrie would have taken him to Valhalla or Folkvonga. Had he been a human or god who died outside of battle, he'd be cast down to Helheim. But Fenrir was a wolf, so his soul will join all the others in Alfheim. Like mothers? Yes. Like your mothers. Force of habit, I suppose, since I don't sleep anymore. Although, it's far more confounding that I'm the tired one. I've seen you stay awake for days at a time without so much as a drooping eyelid. Not even a nap. Gods do not nap. Oh, tell that to Thor. Mimir, you said souls come in four parts. Does that mean you can lose some of your soul, but not all of it? Aye. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Lose any one of them, and the entire being suffers. Still, sometimes luck alone is enough. Just ask your father. My success does not come from luck. Ah, the refrain of the eternally lucky. Oh, I gotta remember to ask Tyr about his travels to the lands beyond the seas. You wish to travel the world? I don't know. Maybe. See new places. Find out more about... myself.
Yikes. This place is wrecked. And yes, I am staying alert. There are probably tons of those Grim around. Brother, I had a thought. What if we took a stealthy approach to our next battle? No.
Did I ever tell the two of you how I made a small fortune in Asgard? Once, Baldur arranged for every archer in the city to open fire on him. We took bets on how many arrows could be lodged in his body until the sheer weight of them made him fall down. Ha! That's awful. Oh, no, no. He was laughing the whole time. And mine was the closest guess. 446 arrows exactly. That's horrible. You better not tell that story in front of Freya. Yes, lad, because I've suddenly taken leave of my senses. Just saying. How's the shield holding up, Black? It's good. I always knew Sinji was a great blacksmith, but this magical shield, it just feels natural. The shield is well made, but it is you who wields it with skill. Thanks. Brother, in my travels, I heard of a great battle in your homeland, at a place called the Gates of Fire. The Hard Gates. You were there? No. Is that regret in your voice? I did regret not dying there for many years, but no longer. Is that pure Svartalfheim slag? Give it here. <laughs> oh, wow. It seems useful. Do you believe in fate, Sindri? Oh, of course not. You think I'd wash my hands this much if I thought that what I do doesn't ultimately matter? There's only one thing with any say over how we live our lives, and that's us. <laughs> 